we bounce the gates, something happens. We discovered early on that what we needed was a worldwide grassroots movement. Water conservation and reforestation are the main ecological issues of the 21st century. Desertification is a malignant process. It is consuming our planet, just like cancer can consume a human's body. The Sahara is moving south very, very fast, taking more and more of the savanna and the forest over and making it into unusable land where there's no livelihood for people and there is no biodiversity and there is no animals. And I see people leaving their homes because they can't sustain themselves and they're becoming homeless in nearby towns and cities. This is so sad. What we need to do is keep much more water on the land so that nature can do the work for us and supply us the water. We don't need to depend on commuting water from very far away. We need to depend on local water going into local aquifers and then being pumped locally and supporting the farmers and other people that live on the land. When we came here uh, seven years ago, my wife, my daughter and I, this looked like the moon. It was a lunar landscape, it was very white, very barren, and we wanted to plant a tropical dry evergreen forest on this barren land. And we started by planting trees. Soon enough we discovered that planting trees is not enough and we have to keep the water on the land. What makes this land so arid is the fact that all the rainwater that falls in the monsoon just goes away. So we started doing a lot of water conservation work, just stopping the water everywhere we could through check dams and swales and bunds and gabions and different uh, methods of stopping the water. And this has worked miracles. The result is six meters increase in the water table and a lot of vegetation that is growing here. Then people can harvest it in their wells for their agriculture or for their domestic uses and of course for drinking. In the process we established a community of volunteers. We have a thousand volunteers a year coming here from more than 50 countries doing the work on the land, bringing their own ideas and creativity and of course spreading the word out. We chose to do Sadna Forest Haiti, our second project, in the poorest place in Haiti, in a place called Ansapit. Very few NGOs want to go there. We bring with us not just expertise, but optimism. Desertification is not just a physical problem, it's a social problem. And Sadna Forest's role is also to introduce faith into the people living there, faith in their land, faith in their ability to stay there and to live um, a good, fulfilling life. We have to create a grassroots movement and this Sadna Forest can do by replicating itself further than Haiti. Just imagine what we can do if we have 10 Sadna Forests or 20 or 50. In all arid corners of the world, this could make a huge change and spread this knowledge to local people and empower them to change the fate of their land and to change the fate of their lives. What is unique about Sadna Forest is the fact that we have a huge team that is all volunteers and the cost of our work is very very low so we can do huge amounts of work all over the world with very very little funding. That's cost effective and that's bringing the right message to the people. If you want to make a break, if you want something true, if you want to make a change, to reach the real person in you, if you want to sleep, understand.